first so we know what we're looking at. <laughs> the staircase, wow, it's amazing. Oh, getting north. Symbolic sites of Krabi, two mountains are like natural gateway to Krabi. Whoever passes through the gate should return to their whole town. If they, they will always end up coming back to Krabi. True. <laughs> yeah. Prehistoric humans, as far back as the Stone Age. So you can see why they lived in here, nice and cool, feel that breeze. It's perfect, isn't it? Wow. All these nooks and crannies. an impressive cave isn't it? For 30 baht? <laughs> right, so apparently Damn son, where'd you find this? Prehistoric man. He's standing about what, 20 foot tall? He's got pointy teeth. He's got bigger feet than me. Only just. Only just. Got a large Python wrapped around them. Python sort of look at this the python's head though. Yeah. So that's the vertebrae of the python. That's the bloke's teeth. And a couple of his parts of his fingers. Just so you know. Well, I'm not having that, like. I'm not having that. That was a bit more convincing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the, the broken pots. <laughs> oh, come on. I think we're the fairground attraction. <laughs> the cave itself is amazing. Yeah. It doesn't really need this. Somebody painted glasses on that one. <laughs> Don't mind, guys. Just go and stand. Give you a rough idea. <laughs> nah. Nah, not having it. Have you got the, the other phone, the Thai phone on you? In 1947, a Bedouin boy was traversing the cliffs along the Dead Sea in Israel's Judean desert, searching for a stray goat. As legend has it, he happened upon a cave burrowed into the face of the limestone. Provoked by curiosity and divine providence, the boy cast a stone into the mouth of the cave. But rather than falling to the arid ground with a thud, as he expected, the stone struck something altogether unexpected, as the unmistakable sound of shattering pottery rang in the air. Upon entering the cave to investigate the source of the sound, this young Bedouin goat herder made what was to become one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. Stowed within large earthen jars were rolls of ancient parchment, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Ten more caves would be discovered in subsequent years, containing many more manuscripts and archaeological artifacts.
The Dead Sea Scrolls are a collection of some 981 texts discovered between 1946 and 1956 in the caves of Qumran. The texts, written in Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and Nabataean, are inscribed predominantly on parchment, but also on papyrus and bronze. Due to the poor condition of some of the manuscripts, not all of them have been identified, and only fragments of some of them remain. Among the Dead Sea Scrolls are numerous copies of every book in the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament protocanon, except the Book of Esther. Many apocryphal works are also present, such as the Book of Jubilees, the Genesis Apocryphon, the Book of Noah, the Book of Enoch, and the Book of Giants, all of which were found together in Cave 1 of Qumran. The Book of Giants, composed in Aramaic, is dated with certainty to at least the 2nd century BC, if not much earlier. The content of the manuscript, though severely fragmented, expounds on the narrative of the Book of Enoch concerning the fall of the angelic watchers, their malevolent hybrid offspring, and the great flood that ensued as a result. This particular narrative is not exclusive to the Book of Enoch, but is referenced extensively throughout the Bible in both the Old and New Testament, as well as in many of the apocryphal works, including the books of Jasher and Jubilees, and can be traced throughout the written and oral tradition of every major ancient civilization on the planet. Because the manuscript is eroded and fragmented, its exact contents and their order are uncertain. Nevertheless, much can be deduced from what remains. The Book of Giants describes in detail how the fallen angels insidiously corrupted the genetics of all flesh on the earth. It tells us specifically that 200 donkeys, 200 asses, 200 rams of the flock, 200 goats, 200 beasts of the field, from every animal, from every bird, were selected for miscegenation. The word miscegenation refers to the mixing of races or species, particularly in the context of sexual intercourse. The text that follows makes it abundantly clear that this was no mere act of interspecies breeding, but instead extreme cross-species genetics involving the seed of the angels themselves. They defiled. They begot giants and monsters. They begot, and behold, all the earth was corrupted. It is important to note that not only were giants begotten of the fallen angels, but also monsters. According to the text, giants and monsters are two very distinct designations. Scripture validates that when angels inseminate human women, giant angel-human hybrid beings are generated. We can infer, then, that when angels inseminate animals, monstrous angel-animal hybrid beings are generated, varying in appearance according to their respective species. These hybrid monsters could very well have been sentient, conscious, with the ability to think and reason like us, at least in some cases, probably dependent on the degree of angelic genetic markers present in their genomes. In fact, the notions of sentience among the hybrid monsters seems to be presupposed in a particular section of the manuscript. Thereupon two of them had dreams, and the sleep of their eyes fled from them. And they arose, and came to, and told their dreams, and said in the assembly of their comrades, the monsters. This text assumes that at least some of the monsters were sentient, because they could hear and understand the words of their comrades, the giants, and presumably speak in their language. Although these monsters were in a sense the stepbrothers of the giants, having the same fathers, they seemed to be of an inferior caste. Whereas their fathers were angelic watchers, their mothers were literally beasts. We can therefore infer that their intellectual capacity was less than that of the giants who were born of human mothers. Furthermore, 
Both the book of Enoch and the book of Giants exclusively designates the giants as the children of the angels. The angel-animal hybrid monsters seem to be regarded as offspring, but not direct descendants like the giants. The book of Enoch and the book of Giants reveals the particular affection that the watchers had for their human hybrid children. And inasmuch as they, the watchers, delight themselves in their children, the giants, the murder of their beloved ones shall they see, and over the destruction of their children shall they lament, and shall make supplication unto eternity. The children of angels are the giants, and they would not let all their loved ones be neglected. Another interesting anecdote in the text is a reference to at least one of the giants having the capability of flight, which is demonstrated when Makwe, son of the watcher Barakel, journeys to consult with Enoch. He mounted up in the air like strong winds and flew with his hands like eagles. He left behind the inhabited world and passed over desolation, the great desert. The phrase, flew with his hands like eagles, could be literal, and that some of the giants might have inherited an innate supernatural ability to travel through the air like their angelic fathers. Alternatively, it might be an allegorical reference to a technology not understood by the writer. This kind of rhetorical device is common when uneducated minds attempt to describe advanced technological concepts such as aeronautics and aerospace craft. The Book of Enoch emphasizes the fact that the Watchers taught their hybrid children the secrets of heaven, which included what we would call advanced physics, mathematics, chemistry, astrology, etc. Hence, the idea that the giants would be capable of manufacturing and operating advanced technology is certainly supported in the narrative. The primary theme and bulk of the content from the Book of Giants concerns a series of ominous dreams and visions that were troubling the titan sons of the Watchers, portents of imminent judgment. Makwe reports the first of these dreams to his fellow giants. He sees a tablet inscribed with many names being immersed in water. When it emerges, all but three names have been washed away. The dream evidently symbolizes the destruction of all but Noah and his two sons and the Great Flood. The following is a brief summary of the story recounted in the Book of Giants, based on the legible fragments that have been reconstructed and supplemented by the Book of the Watchers and First Enoch. Two hundred angelic beings called Watchers made a pact to defy God and descended to the earth in the days of Jared. They took human women as wives and had sexual intercourse with them. Their wives gave birth to hybrid giants. The Watchers taught their wives and children the secrets of heaven, and the human race was beguiled by the forbidden knowledge. The giants began to rule over the inhabitants of the earth. The Watchers chose animals from diverse species, two hundred of each kind, in order to copulate with them and progenerate genetic aberrations. The animals conceived hybrid monsters according to their respective species. Nearly all life on the planet became genetically corrupted and flesh-eating. The giants and the monsters terrorized the earth and devoured the human race. The giants began to have foreboding dreams and visions that deeply troubled them. They decided to seek out Enoch to interpret the dreams. Enoch presents them with a copy of the tablet addressed to the Watchers, pronouncing a terrible judgment from God upon them, their wives, and their children. The giants are in denial concerning their inevitable fate. The Watchers come to the assembly of their offspring, and with great sorrow and weeping, verify the terrible judgment written on the tablet. The giants, enticed by an angel of heaven, make war with one another and annihilate themselves. The watchers are bound by the angels of heaven and imprisoned in the abyss. A great flood destroys all life on earth except Noah, his two sons, and their wives. 
the book of Genesis, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, 2 Samuel, 1 Chronicles, Isaiah, Daniel, Amos, 2 Peter, Jude, the book of Jubilees, the book of Jasher, the Genesis Apocryphon, the book of Noah, the book of Enoch, and many more ancient writings besides, along with the oral tradition of every prime civilization on this planet, confirm the story I just outlined from the book of giants. At this point in history, only willful ignorance denies it. Reporting for SteveQuayle.com, I'm Timothy Alberino, and that's my analysis. Hey.